What is DITA? In this lesson, we're going to dive into that more. Hey there, my name's Josh, and over 10 years of experience in technical writing, and I'm also the founder of Technical Writer HQ. And before we dive into the lesson, take a moment to subscribe to our channel, and that way you won't miss any of our future videos. Now let's go ahead and get started. So DITA is the acronym for Darwin Information Typing Architecture. It's an XML-based open standard architecture for document representation. And XML is an acronym for Extensible Markup Language. It's a text-centric markup language derived from Standard Generalized Markup Language, or in other words, SGML. A markup language such as XML uses tags to define elements within a document. And tags are markup instructions enclosed in angle brackets. So for example, you have angle roots angle and angle name angle. And we can read markup languages because they contain standard words rather than programming code or syntax. And XML and hypertext markup language or HTML are the two most popular markup languages. XML is used to store structured data rather than to format or display information on a page. And you can use XML to represent structured information for documents, books, data, manuscripts, and more. The Technical Publications Department at IBM developed DITA. And in 2004, IBM donated DITA to the OASIS Standards Organization. The OASIS DITA Technical Committee now manages DITA. And some DITA features include modularity. With modular document development, you can reuse topics and treat any group of topics or elements as a modular document component. Instead of being created as one document, you can design a large manual as a collection of different modules. And you can arrange those modules into different configurations to create different manuals. And modular manuals are easier to maintain and can be produced with efficiency. And then we have structured authoring where you define and enforce consistent organization of information, which reduces authoring time and increases analysis time. And we have information typing. Information is structured by topics with content models appropriate to the nature of the content. And the three basic data information types are concept, task, and reference. Then we have minimalism. An approach that presents the reader with the smallest amount of information necessary to achieve the reader's goals. And the needs of the reader or the learner and not the system being document guide the information architecture in the writing style. Next, we have inheritance. This enables specialization of information types. The three base information types of so concept, task, and reference evolve from the topic proto information type and inherit the characteristics of a shared base structure. And then we have topic based. A topic-based architecture allows information reuse and makes translation and localization more efficient. And DITA defines four types of topics. And a topic provides a generic structure for information. And the first is concept. And this contains background information and examples. Next we have is task, which includes procedures. Then we have reference, which describes commands, parameters, and other features. And last here is metadata. A special data file called a map or data map specifies topics included in a deliverable document. The data map does not store content. It contains pointers to the topics that contain content. And the data document is modular. The basic information unit called a topic addresses a single subject. And you specify the overall content of a data document in a topic map or a data map, which contains a hierarchy of topic references. And here you can see that the structure of the topic element is simple. You have angle, title, angle, elements, an optional angle, short, desk, angle, or angle, abstract, angle, element, which is typically longer and more descriptive than the title. And an angle, body, angle, element contains the main body of your topic. And you can include other elements in data files, such as lists, tables, images, and links. And here you can see that the data map defines a document structure. Imagine you have a library of content. If you need a particular document, you can make a data map file, produce output, and your document is ready. Now let's take a look at the most popular data implementation. So the DITA Open Toolkit or DITA OT is an open source publishing engine for content authored in DITA that IBM developed. And the toolkit's extensible plugin mechanism allows users to add their own transformations and customize the default output. And several DITA authoring tools and DITA content management systems integrate with the DITA Open Toolkit, or parts of it. And this really helps make a seamless publishing workflow. And standalone tools that have also been developed to run the DITA OT via graphical user interface instead of the command line. You can use the 
data open toolkit to publish XML content. And you can also use commercial data implementations to publish content. In addition to data, there are several other XML based document types such as docbook. However, data is more focused on technical writing and offers several benefits for technical communicators. And some of these are that Ditto relies on open standards and free options like the Ditto Open Toolkit eliminate licensing costs for proprietary tools. And the Open Toolkit provides paths to multiple outputs types by default. And Ditto reduces content duplication and increases information reuse through modular writing. And the Ditto structure has elements with similar names to corresponding HTML tags, reducing the learning curve for those familiar with HTML. And the growing adoption of data standards means that more writers are familiar with it. And data helps fulfill several business requirements, including content delivery in multiple formats. Data XML files are encoded in plain text markup, which you can then render content into the multiple formats, including PDF, HTML, Word, and even write to WordPress. You can set up a publishing process that supports multiple languages too. Once it's set up, the output generation process is automated. And we have compliance requirements. Data can help ensure compliance with regulatory and legal frameworks. And you can configure data to require and allow and disallow content components in different contexts. Inside data tools, you have guided editing. The software tells authors which elements are required and allowed at different points in a document. So for example, you can set up a data content model for a medical journal article to require an abstract, author information including credentials and affiliations, and require content containers in a specified order. And without these required components, the article is not valid. And one of the other benefits is faster time to market. Data can improve time to market through content reuse. And once you have a library of content, you can use it to produce multiple documents. And we have automated formatting. And this enables a reduction in authoring effort and faster content delivery. And one of the big benefits is reduced localization costs. Data can help you streamline the translation and formatting for localization. And this includes translation. Another major benefit of content reuse is that the content is only translated once for each language, regardless of how often it's used for publishing. And this helps reduce translation costs and improves the quality of the information by ensuring documentation consistency. And another benefit is formatting. Data workflows support automated formatting. The data content files do not contain formatting information. Rather, you apply for formatting style sheets to the translated data files. And you can configure these style sheets ahead of time to support the languages that you need. And automatic formatting reduces costs significantly by reducing the time and effort spent on formatting. And there you have it, everything from data and XML, data history, its features, benefits for technical communicators, and the business case for data. And thank you for staying with me all throughout this lesson. And if you feel like you have a better understanding of data, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to our channel, like the video so you can keep up to date with everything technical documentation. Again, my name is Josh. I'm the founder of Technical Writer HQ. And I'm going to go ahead and see you in some of our other lessons where we dive deeper into technical documentation and much more. Cheers.